say point A is here, point B is here. We're, there's too much emphasis on getting to point B. All right, guys. You guys want to blow up your back? Saw I blow my back up. You want a mass building back workout? Try this. You want bulging lats? You want Tyrannosaurus tr traps? You guys want lats like Dorian Yates? With half the work and half fucking genetics? You want to figure out how to not work hard, get big? You want this is the shortcut channel. Is that guy, does that guy Kenny K.O. still make videos? Do you know who that is? The guy who goes around asking people if they're natty or not? Oh yes, I think he does. Is that still a thing? I think so. I like to ask on behalf of all ginger bearded guys out there that Kenny shave his fucking beard. We don't claim you, bro. <laughs> I'm sure you're a nice guy, but like putting people on the spot for that kind of question, like after all these years and how far we've come, like, I get it, it's funny sometimes. I know he's not, he doesn't mean like to be, he's not maliciously going after people, I don't think. But there's been a couple of times where it's like, you're asking a female who's 100% on drugs, if she's on drugs. And like, she probably can't say so as much as she might want to, because maybe she actually has a job, or she has like family members watching, or kids watching, or like something, someone could see that clip and she's, has, she's forced to lie, right? Like. Because it's like, but everyone knows, like everyone knows everyone you're asking already. They don't, for you to clarify it is kind of weird. Like we all know, you know even, like <laughs> you don't even have to ask the question, man. It's like, if you're going to keep doing that stuff, take the, take the ginger beard off. We don't want you being a part of our crew, man. Just like be clean shaven and do your own thing. You already, gingers already have it bad enough, man. Like catch, catch shit for that. Been over this before, just like every fucking video we make, we've been over it before. Just reiterating it in different ways so people fucking can digest it better. Or because their ADHD kicks in and we can't fucking get them to pay attention. Like if you see something that works and it works, when I see that, I remember it and I do it. Everyone else on the planet seems to be like, what? What? <laughs> that sounds good. Squirrel! <laughs> what? <laughs> it's like the dude in 51st States yeah, yeah. keeps introducing himself. Hey, I'm Bob. Hey, I'm Bob. Hey, I'm Bob. So we're just gonna keep fucking saying the same shit over and over again, presenting it in different ways so it looks like it's new. So I trained a kid uh, yesterday. It's like a one-off session. A guy bought a, bought a session for his brother. So the kid came in and he was just like everybody else in the history of lifting who's just trying to like, basically his press, his press was this, like you see a million times. The press was basically good to a certain point and then it turned into and then it was yeah, so it's like that shit which we see like constantly the seats too fucking low in my mind I'm like how do we get people to break this habit and so like obviously usually the problem is there's there's too much emphasis on the explosion or that reaching of point B let's say say point A is here point B is here there's too much emphasis on getting to point B. There's, there's, a, there's a little bit lack of emphasis on how to get to point A, right? So in order to work on both those things, like if, say you're a, say you're a person that's not good at both, let's say. The, the real problem, honestly, is a combination of the both of them, but like, let's work on the first one first, which is like the rushing out to get to point B. I don't want to rush to lock out to get weight off of me, because I'm, I'm just at that point moving weight to move weight. I'm not thinking about what I'm doing. It's like shooting a basketball or fucking throwing a baseball and I throw a baseball to like pitch it at a pitch at a catcher and it just goes sailing over the backdrop. Like the like it's just gone. Like I'm nowhere near it, right? But I threw the baseball at the catcher. So what my idea is this is gonna be revolutionary. I don't think anyone else has said this. Like it's fucking been said by a thousand people. But anyway, so if we start here and you're one of these A to B guys who's like the, like we're say we're super slow, which people have over understood the super slow negative and this controlling. So say we're getting all that right and we're actually retracting and lifting up, but we're getting here and we're doing this still, right? My suggestion to people like that is that we work on, you don't work on anything but half range reps for at least like, let's say two months. So let's work on your, you're out of the bottom burst and let's limit it to half ranges. 
so that we, we stop getting this thing where momentum stops and we have to find tension again, we have to stop. So we work on this thing where we basically bring down to about halfway, you can get a partner to work out with you, you get them to put your hands in front of you and we just rock to a spot. So we can still burst, but we're rocking only to a spot where we're able to understand tension because if I only push out halfway, the tension's back on me immediately. It's immediately back on me. I can't take a break here because it's like, oh fuck, I gotta, it's more comfortable to let it fall into the depth of the lift and get my rest down at the bottom of my lift as opposed to you guys resting out here all the time. So this is gonna basically reprogram your brain. And this is taking a page out of guys that we've talked about, like Branch Warren, Jay Cutler, top, top guys who someone for some reason doesn't wanna copy them anymore. Where we're working in the bottom range of the lift. So if we can, if we can figure out that we can get strong in this range here, where we're just working off, say we have proper depth, arch, shoulder, retraction, head movement, rocking out of here. If we can learn to control out of here and be strong at the bottom of even hold reps here, then when we do finally get back to this, we understand that the push to here can be still this burst, but then it ends up being just a squeeze a little more and then falling back into that pressure. Our idea on press is, is to not get weight to a point, catch weight again, get weight to a point. Our, our goal is to be elastic in the sense that I want to build momentum to a point and then I want to rock that momentum back in. So I want to rock out of the bottom on stuff and just keep pulling down into insertion of pec, rocking off, rocking out, sending to origin, sending to origin, right? So that will alleviate that problem. Obviously, it can be on anything, right? It could be on a shoulder press. We'll do one arm shoulder press. I can't show this with both arms. After July 27th, I'll be able to. Brand new shoulder coming soon. Summer 2023, brand new shoulder. <laughs> when you thought it wasn't possible. It's like a trailer for a movie. Anyway, so let's just say it's the same thing here. We're doing, imagine it's two arms. We're just showing you one side view. We have these people that get here and as soon as they pick up weight, literally as soon as this is here, first of all, they grab it like this and they go. Or even if they have this right position, it's still here and it's just like, Literally, you, you can see it, it's just elbow flexion. We're just trying to flex our elbow and push our hand out, right? And there's some reason that like people think on shoulder press that when my, since I'm using my shoulder, it's called a shoulder press, I need to be overly tensed in my shoulder. Just like bicep curl, I gotta be over, I gotta fucking, couldn't possibly be the movement that works the muscle. Like it has to, you have to engage it. So anyway, if you just pick this up here, even if you want to start in this rigid position, my shoulder is still depressed down. I never did this. I'm not closing this distance. It's just like we talk about on back. My shoulder's down. The distance between my ear and my shoulder is as long as I can keep it here. So I want to come out of depth off my palm and dropping into my shoulder and into my lat. So my lat is holding this pressure right now at the bottom. So my hand's light. If I just slide out, it's off. It doesn't, it's not like I pull it, I go, I'm going to slide out of this thing, right? Like I'm just come back out because I can walk up underneath it and hold it in my body, right? So it's the same thing as if I'm going to press here and I'm going to rock forward here. If I want to do a stagnant press where I'm not moving, it's the same thing, but it's just up here. So it's my hand leading the way. My hand accommodates here. So my elbow breaks and my hand sets down and I press. So for these people that want to just do this shit and go, huh, huh, and they're locking out. You're no longer allowed to do that. And it's the same thing on the press. If you're having the problem of exploding too much, now you're only gonna do again, rock to this half range and back down. Rock to this half range and back down. So it's all pressure on hand, driving, sitting, driving, sitting. If you have the opposite where someone's afraid, I've had this too where guys, they press and they do this and their arm doesn't straighten. So this is them extended. Their arms this bent because they think that they're pushing with their shoulder. So they're going and their arm never breaks. So they never do that. So if that person has a problem, you need to start that person at the top, set their shoulder down, pull their head back and you need to let their elbow break and then press. So about ear line or eye line and press out. So get them to work on this extension phase because they have the bottom phase, right? And then we can piece, piece it all together.
but this is what you need to start doing to become better at lifting. You don't need necessarily all these coaches and all these people telling you all these movements. You need to get better at basic movement patterns that will elicit you working the muscle better. Before you need to worry about like, oh, now I do, now I do my shoulder presses like standing on a bench, teetering on a fucking BOSU ball and pressing up over my head because it's engaging so much more. It's like, you don't even know how to do the most, a standing shoulder press is probably the most basic thing you could do next to a seated press. Do you know what I mean? So it's the same thing on a seated press. If someone has a dumbbell, if this is the dumbbell now and we're sitting with two dumbbells on a bench and this person is still doing the same thing, they're going, they're arcing, they arc when they push and their whole shoulder moves. Then you need to start them here and set the shoulder down. So now this shoulder can't activate. And it's just break, press. And understand that shoulder pressing is breaking at elbow, catching at hand. So my elbow folds and my hand catches the weight. I don't pull my arm down and rock my arm out and use my shoulder to press. Like you don't want to do that because your shoulder is one of the most unstable, like dynamic joints you can have. It goes in every fucking direction. Some people can reach behind their back and fucking twist their arms and roll over their shoulder, dislocated, right? So that's not a stable joint. So you need to find a way to lock down your body that is stable. So if, if my lat and my rib cage need to be it, now I'm locked here. So whatever happens to this, even if I, even if I jerk or I move or I can't get this weight, I go to push and I can't, it just falls. I'm not gonna jerk this weight and go, you know what I mean? And do this push away shit. Or like, you see these guys, one's, one's going up, one's going down. It's like this fight to get to the top. But the thing is the reward at the top is nothing because there's nothing happening at the top of a press, guys. Especially at the top of a shoulder press. At the top of a bench press or a chest press, there's contraction. At the top of a shoulder press, there's nothing. The only way there's something at the top of a shoulder press is if we, if we drive through and we press behind our neck. So if I get this extension, where my head's behind, my head's in front of my, or sorry, in front of my delt, and I'm locked out here, my delt is now engaged. Not here, just here. Because I've extended my arm and I'm locked out now here. This pressure going forward and my shoulder moving backwards has elicited a contraction that I'm here. So I'm locked out in my shoulder. Right, so if that's the extension you want, you want to fight for extension, you should be fighting for that extension. Not just going, uh, uh, like, you know what I mean? It's not like the longer you push your arm out, the more your shoulder works. It actually makes no sense because your hand is how far away from your shoulder. So if my hand gets further away from my shoulder, how is it working better? You know what I mean? It makes no sense. Anyway, let's try to think of another, do have the back of it. So they're almost half poles, just to engage that outer and grab and let go, grab and let go. So we focus on this like pulling, pulling around so that we open up that back.